Paul, do you have a favorite superhero? Yeah, like, well, I guess Superman, Batman, and Spider-Man are the big three. <laughs> Mighty Mouse? I guess that's a superhero. But you know, like in sports, the big three are considered football, basketball, and baseball. There are other sports, but I feel that you have to pick from the big three first, no? Godzilla? <laughs> okay, okay. You're really out there now. I guess Godzilla's a superhero. It seems that he's always saving towns from sinister other monsters. <laughs> yeah, he could beat anyone. What was his superpower? Just being really strong and mad? Invincibility? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Mighty Code Coder. I'm Rob Fitzgerald, here to make you great and help you innovate. In this episode, we'll cover actions, effects, and logic pieces in depth. You'll learn how to add actions like coins, action animations, power-up magnets, and yes, invincibility. Create an in-game economy with coins and other actions such as power-ups is an excellent way to give your players goals and reward them. When you make your own game with this in mind, your overall gameplay experience and player retention will be much better. The option to collect coins also empowers users to unlock characters and other special items you decide to include, which can lead up to an in-app purchase generating real money. We'll cover how to import coins for players to collect, a coin tracker, invincibility power-ups, and path logic pieces. You'll also learn how to add beautiful light effects and part particle effects in creative ways to make your game look really professional. Cool, huh? Look, I've been teaching computer science uh, and coding for 20 years, seems like longer. All the way back to the days when you would entice people to visit your website by creating games and posting them on your site. You tried to create what is called gamification. Gamification is affording users the ability to collect and gain some kind of monetary item within your game. It's a reward that people crave just to have it. You see a lot with stickers. Have you ever noticed what people do for stickers? Just about anything. So we're going to create, let's say, virtual stickers or rewards in Glitch. Also, in the years that I've been programming games, I really find that gamers really like the feeling of in invincibility. Let's get going. Okay, so if I go command space BUI, we'll bring up BuildBox in the spotlight search on a Mac. Uh, I'm gonna take this welcome screen. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna start the tutorial. All right, here it is, and let's go ahead and make it big enough so you can see it even on an iPhone. And I think the first thing I want to point out is that uh, I made a world called Sandlot. See it there? And what, what this does is it allows me to test a bunch of stuff out and not ruin the world that I'm actually currently working on. So you might want to set up a s similar type of thing. This is my test world. This is the world that I, we're actually making the game glitch with. Okay, remember the space bar moves this out and you can see the other nodes. And if you do click on world, you have these properties here we talked about last time that bring about gravity and such. Okay, and so let's go into the world node and let's talk about adding a coin. Now to add coins, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my finder window, uh, command N for a new one. There's my uh, make your own graphics folder. If you go into the Glitch Extras, you'll see that there's a coin folder, all right? And then in there is, you know, an animation like this, okay? It looks like a little box with some, I don't know what you call that, sparklies around it. And we're gonna take, we're gonna uh, select all, and we're gonna go ahead and drop this into our wheel. Now, most of the time we've been just putting them in objects. This time we're gonna actually add it into the section that says action because this is actually gonna be an action. 
All right, so there it is. The box is right here. Let's put that somewhere up here. And let's go ahead and click on um, S four times and I'll have them. Okay, so over here in my asset panel now, I have an action and it's this right here. And this piece is not named very well and I, I do encourage you to name it well. It's uh, later on in your game, you're gonna be happy you did this because these coins and things are gonna show up in other spots in BuildBox. And if it's named appropriately, you're gonna have an easy time. You want to try to figure out what, what the, each thing is. So this is your coin. And while we're here, let's talk about the action type. The action type is gonna be, look at coin. Okay, later on we'll do the invincibility here also. Okay, so for right now we'll set it to coin. And it's gonna be a character uh, animation placement. Okay, so where when you, we collect something, it's gonna say two points or two, you get two tokens or something. It's gonna play right over the character and it's gonna be an overlay. All right, so that looks really good. All right, let's go actually play that and see what that looks like. Now, I'm previewing on iPhone at, uh, iPhone 10. I always call it iPhone X, but it's a really an X, a 10. And I can go ahead and start it, and you'll see there they are, and you'll see my character comes and collects them. You see the overlay? That's, we're given 10 per coin. And let's go ahead and restart that and show you where I gave it 10 per coin. All right, so if I click on it and I scroll it in, there's a reward, it's 10, okay, per coin, and you can change that to whatever you want. Okay, and there's other things in here. Uh, so each coin is 10 coins, but a coin could have different value, like a nickel, you could have 10 nickels, but that's only worth 50 cents, where 10 dimes would be a dollar. So you could have reward points. Let's just start with two on that. Okay, now, uh, it would be nice to, if there was some kind of uh, label so we could see how many coins we're collecting. So let's do that. And you know, in our UI, we have a world UI. Let's do it right in here. And so here's the labels and I'll go ahead and let's go ahead and drop in two labels. There's one. This label is gonna be text and we'll just call it coins. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing over there. Okay, so coins. And then I'll go ahead and um, I should have did this before, but if I go D, I could select another one. Actually, let's just drag it in right here like this. Okay, and this one is not going to be user text. This one is actually going to be the score. Okay, and it won't be type distance. It will be coins. All right, and the amount, total amount of coins. All right, and yeah, that looks good. I also like to click on this stick to edge. So... Basically, no matter uh, what phone you preview it on, it's going to be uh, aligned in the right spot. Okay, so that's a, a nice little tip. All right, so let's go ahead and run that and see if uh, now this, this actually totals our coins. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. There they are. So as you go on there, there it is. 40, I got 40 coins. All right. And uh, there's, you know, 40 points or 10. It was 40 cents. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty nice. Uh, the one problem is, is that you saw that it was not aligned very well. So let's go ahead and, and move these to where I really would like them. And let's see, let's put this one up here. And let's put this one up here. All right, let's go ahead and run that. Retry it, there they are. Okay, now they're up there. But you probably see another problem, okay? One, it's still not aligned very well. But two, it's kind of faint. And I feel like it needs its own font. So let's kind of create our own font. We haven't talked about that yet. Oh, over here in the right corner is a button to actually make fonts. So we're going to click on that. A font editor or builder, uh, it's called, comes out. And we're going to add our new font. So there's a default font. We're going to click Add. And we're going to make our the name of our own font, which we'll call this... Something simple, the coin font. Okay, something like that. And you can change the size and the main color. And uh, the main color, it's kind of nice because I could go on this and I could, you see this little eyedropper here? It's right behind me. Okay, let me move this so you guys can see or I'll move. Okay, so if I click on that, that'll let me go and pick a color. Well, you know what a great color would be? The same color as this pause button. 
All right, and these are kind of a salmon color. All right, so I pick the salmon color, hit OK, and now that font is going to be a salmon color. I'm going to turn the gradient off so it's a nice, bright uh, area. When I have two tones, like this background does have a light and a dark area, I always like to kind of hit it with a stroke. So um, the stroke color is going to be a white, and I'm going to go ahead and draw it. Let's see how that looks. Maybe I, I won't keep that. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, and so I'm done with that, so I'm going to click off. Now you see it doesn't change yet. It's still white because over here I got to say what font I want it and I'm going to say coin font. And make sure that you click on this and do the same thing. I'm coin font. All right now if I go ahead and play this you'll see if I retry it. No, oh, that's nice. See now I have that up there. You can really see it through dark and light. Okay, you could also make that stroke black or gray. I feel like I want to do that for some reason. Okay, so let's go in there and that coin font. Let's go ahead and make the stroke color instead of white. Let's make it a blackish color or black. Okay, so there it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that and go ahead and run it. And I think this will look a little bit better. Um, let me refresh it. Ah, there we go. All right. Yeah, still a little, the stroke is a little bit pixelated. Another way I, I try to work with that is I, I do a drop shadow on it. So I'm going to spend a little more time on it. Sorry if this is not exciting to you, but this is very important to me. If I just go ahead and put a nice little, see it's at 49%, I'm going to shadow it a little bit more. Okay, and that will take some of the some of the pixelation out of it. All right, we'll do something like that. Shadow, okay, opacity 100%, okay. And then let's go ahead and click on this and play it and retry, and you'll see that uh, still a little pixelated. Let me restart it, see if that could get it better. Yeah, it is a little bit better, I could tell. Probably needs a gray uh, shadow, all right, and we could spend some time at the end when we clean this game up with that font, okay? So for right now, let's leave that because I want to move on to other great things. So uh, that is your coin and your coin labels, and uh, we're off to a great start, okay? So we have that coin sequence, and we dragged it. Remember, we dragged it in the action uh, layer of the drop wheel, okay? Of the drag and drop wheel, I guess we call it, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and um, let's add some other stuff, including invincibility. This is what we, we really wanted, all right? Right, Paul? That's really what you wanted, right? <laughs> I knew it. Okay, so let's add an invincibility, and you probably guessed it. We have an invincibility here. It's called Power Up, and it's just going to look something like that. And let's go back go to our world to add it. And let's add it to the same area here, all right? And, and you probably want to put these strategically throughout your game. I'm just putting them in the startup so, so you can quickly see what they do. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and select all of these and drop it once again into the action area, all right? And there's the power up. And uh, I'll go ahead and just put it right there. And over in my actions, I have once again, something like this, and I could go ahead and put invincibility. Actually, it's already s typed in there. So uh, actually, let's call it power up. All right, so there's our power up. And if we come in here, we can go ahead and go invincibility. All right, and that looks good. So now that's going to give us a, a certain amount of invincibility. And um, invincibility only lasts a certain amount of time. And so uh, we should have a countdown to how long that's going to last. So we have a, what's called an animation, an action animation here. And BuildBox gave us a power-up counter, which is just a one, two, three, four countdown. Okay, so we want a four-second countdown. And we're not going to drag that in the wheel. We're going to actually drag it right into here. And then we're going to go ahead and work on this animation. Now, this is 30 frames per second. 
And if we divide it, if we want it to be one second per, we have to actually make this 0 0.033. Okay, that'll be that'll be one second. If I play it, it'll be set for one second. Three, two, one, done. Okay, so there it is. We'll stick that to the edge also. And yeah, it looks good. All right, and then you also, I'm gonna stop this for a second. You also have to put where it's gonna be. So this is where the this is where the invincibility or your character is gonna be. So let's put it right up above it as a countdown. All right, and that looks good. And then how long do we wanna play it for? We wanna play it for four seconds. Okay, so that'll play all those animations. Let's go ahead and play it and see how that, see how that looks. It's gonna look great. All right, retry. Here it is. Oops, let me refresh it. Start it. There it is. All right, pick it up. There it is. There's my countdown. Now it's upside down. Hmm. Wonder why that's upside down. Okay. One of the reasons that's upside down is we actually have this character turned 180 degrees around from a previous um, episode because we wanted those trails behind it. So if we clicked on the character, you see, you'll see that it's rotated 180 degrees. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, well, maybe we should rotate it 180 degrees. All right, oops. 180, all right. And see if that does it. Uh, I think I did the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, click on this. Character, where is, it? Where is my character? There it is. Yes, there it is. So the character is rotated 180 degrees. So if I put that back to zero, all right, and play it, this should now be on top when I hit it. Here it is. Three, two, one. Okay, nothing could, could hit me. I should probably do that yet. Let me run into a mountain so you could see that I have invincibility. So I grab it. Three, two, one. In that mountain, no problem. That mountain, no problem. Hit it again when it's over, and I die. So that's your invincibility power up. Isn't that nice? Really good. Okay. So there's tons of ways, tons of things you can do with that. And so I'm sure you're already imagining things you could do. You could put it throughout your game. You could hide them. Um, yeah, so have fun with that. And um, let's move on to the next subject, which is going to be lighting. Okay, so now you could create lights here. Um, why would you want to create lights? Well, if, if your user goes into a different area that uh, it gives them a sense of, oh, I, I, this color, I, I know what this, this is about. I know what this scene's about because you have different colors, different lighting, different effects. And there's also a way to, to make the light shine on certain objects that it makes them really beautiful. So let's go ahead and add some effects. So here it is, this is a light. Okay, it's right here. And you see how I can bring it and shine on those mountains. Let's, let's scroll in on those mountains. So you get a real nice look. Now the light is in front of the mountains, but what if it was in front of one mountain, but behind another. So you see how that kind of gives it a depth look? Okay, and I could pull it back a little bit and just give a, a little shine to that middle mountain, okay? And then not to the one in front of it. So it gives us some depth, really cool. All right, if you want to do another one of these, you could hit S and you got another one down here. Let's say I wanted to change the color of it, okay? Um, Here's the color over here. So let's say I want to do a red, a red looking color. So this one would be red and you could have that maybe where the power up is so they know to look. If you want to try to push the user into looking to a certain area, here's a power up right here. All right, and I'll put it right there. Make sure it, 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 if it goes in front of the power up, it could kind of dole it out like that. So make sure it goes back behind it. All right, so it kind of directs the user to see that. And if I play that and retry, you'll see there it is. So it kind of gives them a heads up. You see the light over there, the effects it puts on other uh, things in your world. All right, so we're really we're really going now. All right, so beautiful game, uh, nice interaction. There's my my pinball wizard uh, additions I put in for last time, and it's it's looking really good. Okay, all right, now. Let's 
let's add something that's one of my favorites as uh, the particle effect, okay? So in here, we can actually add this particle so you can, it looks like your character is actually, uh, has some exhaust or whatnot, and it's a particle. And I can just go like that. You can see if I play it, there'll be a particle uh, area there. See it? See the particle there? Okay. Now that's, you, you could also use that, um, you could also use that to signify certain areas of your game and, and maybe highlight things like a trap door or whatnot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this particle as an exhaust for my character. So if I click on character and I go in here to the, to the animation editor, I can actually add that particle right inside here. All right. And I could drop that down. Now, in order for me to edit this, I'm going to have to close that world. Um, so if I can go back to this, I'm going to have to close this first. Okay, so go here and then here and then close this. And then let's go back in here and edit this emitter. So put the particle behind it so you can't see it. Um, and then let's go ahead and play this. And you're going to see right now it's already playing. I'm holding the space bar. Okay, and there's my particles. Isn't that nice? It gives it a little bit of a, um, you know, an exhaust look. I don't know if that's a good term in these day and age, but it has a an exhaust to it. And if you click on it, you have all kinds of parameters over here you could change. So let's talk about those. Okay. So the first is, um, this is the total particles. So if that's 150 particles, and if you wanted those 150 particles to look like they're burning like fire, you could do this blend additive. All right, and you can see that it actually lights up. They're, they're like on top of each other. And if you if you have a, an emitter on top of each other, it lights up kind of like fire. All right, so it looks like that. And let's talk about the emission rate and the amount of particles. So it's 150 right now, but let's see if we can just put one. Now one, it, remember, one is two. So that's the, that's the particle right there, it has two. So I have one now. And so there's one gets emitted. Okay, and it won't stop until uh, it's totally exhausted. Okay, and it will go every 50 milliseconds, I believe. So there's just one, so it's going to go the lifespan of the one. So the lifespan is down here. Okay, there's a lifespan, three. Okay, and it's, it's, a, it's a random between three and 0.25. So they, they last longer. Okay, but if you have 150, they're going to emit at 50, I guess it'd be milliseconds. And so let's put that back to 150. All right. And let's uh, actually, let's go one and rate of one. All right. So there it is. And then if this lifespan, I could take it down smaller to where it just has one and you can see that it's flowing away and then when it gets done its lifespan's over it'll now emit another one there it is okay but that's not very fun so just want, want just to see exactly remember i said I always make large changes to see exactly what that setting does so we'll put these back to normal and i'll take the blend off and i kind of like that uh and then start size is 50 this is actually the the size of the particle okay and uh, it has a randomness to it Okay, I guess I missed at the very top is the X and Y axis. So it's position. You could have it random also, let's say up to like 50. And so this is the X axis. So it's going on a random, um, a random X axis as it gets created. You could also do that to the Y. Okay, so it'll be, you know, from, you know, minus 50 to 50. So you see it's going all the way around. I'm going to set those back to zero, though. I don't want to play with those yet. But I, there is one thing I want to do is, what if I wanted to change its gravity? So it should be flowing gravity the way that we're going. So in the game, we did minus 50. Why don't we put 50? So you'll see this thing right in front of you change its gravity effect. And instead of going up, it'll start carrying down. Scroll it in a little bit. All right, let's do a little bit more so you can see it. Minus 90, a little more flow. So you should see this thing dropping right down. And as they go up, they drop down. You should start seeing them tail down here too. 
I feel like they're not staying long enough, so let's go back to three over here. All right, so now they stay a little bit longer, and you should start seeing them. There they go. Okay, so now the gravity's pulling them down. Okay, you probably want to see what that looks like. So let's actually go ahead and play that. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to close this, and let's go ahead and play and see what that looks like. All right, and start it, and there it is. Okay, it has a little tail on it. Okay, but it's not quite it's not quite the fashion I like. I'll show you what I like. Okay, I'm going to close this because that's how we get into the particle emitter. And I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to edit the emitters. And this time, okay, I'm going to actually bring in a different image. Okay, and the image I'm going to bring in is the actual character itself. So it'd be like almost like a shadow of itself. All right, so here is character. And I'm going to just drag the character as our emitter. All right, let's see what this says. Wow, look at that. See how it's a shadow itself? I don't like the burning effect, but though it's kind of cool, I like something more like that. All right. And I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. 0.8 and 0.8. All right. And then uh, what I like to do is change the color. So here's some color variations. So if I double click on this, and let's say I make this a, a greenish color. Okay, and then um, let's click on this and make this white. I'm trying to make like a rainbow effect here. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. And then on this one, if I go and change it to a blue color. Okay, and then you already see them changing up here, right? Isn't that awesome? Okay, so I'm gonna click on this and go to snow and hit OK, and now you'll see that the colors I'm emitting are just uh, every, all the colors of the rainbow, and uh, as the pink ones go away, you'll start seeing all the colors. See that, <laughs> that nice? Okay, pretty cool. If I feel like I've made some other changes to the start size and end size. The blend additive, you know, kind of takes the colors away, so I kind of like the colors. All right, and you could have relative grouped or free. I think relative is the more natural smoke uh, emission. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to kill that, that, and I'm going to go ahead and run this. And I think you're, we're going to see some nice, nice emitters. Okay. I'll go right here and let's start it. And there we go. All right. So look at all those emitters. Look at all the colors. All right. So it's kind of neat looking and you can have different emitters for different levels and whatnot. And uh, it's it's really, really a neat, neat part. That's I, I love putting that in there. And uh, it's a neat part of this game. Okay. All right. Pretty nice, right? All right. So, so excited about that for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. So now let's, I'm going to do one more. Usually I really debated whether I should do this part or not. It's not my favorite tool, but it became my favorite tool because I found someone on uh, YouTube that described it. And uh, it was brilliant. It was a brilliant idea for this. The way the handbook described it was was a little frustrating and didn't really work that well. And um, I said that maybe I don't even put this in the tutorial or maybe I find another way and I found another way. So let's do it. So, all right. So let's first go to scene. Uh, let's add another scene to this. Let's go seven and let's um, let's solo seven and let's prepare for this thing because it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, this, the, the way that uh, this one was taught is the best way to use this, I believe. I don't know, someone could probably debate me on that. But um, the, uh, this is actually logic, okay? So in logic, there's something called a path, all right? So if I drop this path in there, okay, this is gonna be a path for either the character or the enemy or some asset to follow, all right? The book had the character following it. I'm gonna have the enemy follow it, okay? So let me first talk about it, all right? So over here, this path, I could add to the path by just hitting that plus sign, okay? So if I hit that plus sign, and I, I could move it around, all right? Or I could add another one, move that around, and I could make this kind of a square uh, path if I wanted to, all right? And just kind of move that around. And yeah. So do something like that. Now, this is kind of how the book the book had it, believe it or not. And uh, over here, 
are there are uh, properties for it. Okay, and so this property search radius is going to be this circle in here. You can see this real faint circle. That's going to be the search radius in where uh, anything that comes near there can be gravitated into this path. So if I put 100, you'll see it get bigger. Or I could put 200. Okay, see how big the path got? Okay, the speed is how fast you actually go on uh, when you're in the path. And then the attraction force is the biggie. If I go 100 here, then anything that comes near it can really get attracted for it. All right. Uh, the fun part that I found out the other day after listening listening to a million YouTube videos, I mean, fall asleep, waking back up, man, what are the what are the videos they actually send you when you fall asleep and wake back up? You're like, how did I get here? But anyway, so this one was, uh, uh, this is the play mode, and you can go to something like ping pong, all right? And then you go affected assets. Now, before I go and make those settings, let's show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually go and I'm going to get an enemy, all right, let's just say we get this round ball enemy and I put the enemy right there in the vortex. It's already going to be magnified. It's going to it's going to be hooked already. All right, so it's right in there. And let's go ahead and click back on my path and I'm going to say ping pong it and I'm going to say this affects assets and the only assets I want it to affect is the enemy ball. All right, so now the enemy ball should be hooked to this path. All right, and that search radius, I could really just lower that because he's gonna be right on that. And so now you should see a ball that's kind of circling around. So let's go ahead and play that, solo it out. Let's go ahead and play. All right, here it is, that's the start. We get all this stuff first, and then here comes the enemy. Um, I do not see it. Let's refresh it. Start it, okay, grab this stuff. Here comes the enemy, there it is. Okay, and you can see it going through the path. All right, a preset path uh, that I have for it. All right, so that makes another enemy pretty neat, right? All right, so now uh, let's see what happens if I hit it. All right, I feel like I hit it and I feel like it's not killing me, okay? Now there's a reason why that's happening, okay? So let's stop this for a second. And just because I said this is the ball enemy, all right, doesn't make that an enemy. In fact, when you put in these assets, it's actually defaults to a platform. Yep. So you got to turn it to enemy. Now, turn it to enemy, I could go ahead and play it. And now I will be glitched when I hit it. Okay, so there it is. And see if I get in its way. I can't seem to get in this way. <laughs> it's really hard. I'm sure I'll get in its way. There it is, boom, gone, okay? So that's the path. Um, I actually thought, I'm gonna add on to this just a little bit longer. I actually thought of doing something like this. You, if you get these elbows and hit delete on your keyboard, you get rid of this. In fact, I just deleted the whole thing. So let me, let me bring it back in. Uh, so here is my path. Actually, let me undo that. I'll just make sure not to delete it all. Okay, so let's take this off. Delete. Delete. I don't want this thing to go too long. Okay, and then I could go like this and have it just ping, prong, ping pong across the... Okay, so something like that. Enemy ball, put it right on here. Make sure that it still has the enemy ball path. Yeah, it has all that. Okay, so now this thing will ping pong back. Now, I was gonna show you also loop. Loop basically means it's gonna go across, and then instead of going, going uh, from the end, it's gonna start again at the beginning. In fact, let's do that now. Okay, so you should see this thing coming, and then coming, and then coming. All right, and then I'm gonna angle it up a little bit here because we are moving down, so it's gonna look uh, if, if I move it up, it'll take care of some of the down gravity. All right, and so I'm going to refresh it and try. All right, grab some of the invincibility power, and there it is. comes right across. You see how it starts, goes from right to left,
but then starts again right. I personally like uh, the ping pong. Okay, so if you go here, now it'll ping pong across. Okay, back. So it goes from right to left, from left to right, and boom. Okay, so another trick. That's a great use of the path. Uh, not that build boxes handbooks uh, way wasn't just never really could get my head around that. I like that a lot, and uh, so that's it. Okay, that's it for this episode too. I hope this has helped you go out there and create some gamification and monetize your game. Make it great. Make yourself invisible, like Godzilla. <laughs> yes, Paul. They already subscribed. If they have questions, they can leave comments below or go to the website at www.themightycodecoder.com or find me on Twitter, Mighty Code Coder. Are you sure Godzilla was a superhero? What about, what about Billy Jack?